Hello friends, this video on chemical effects of current part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So it is time to look at some of the questions. Uh, so let us look at question number one. Fill in the blanks. Most liquids that conduct electricity are solutions of so what did we see? Whenever a liquid is, consists of acids or bases or they consist of salts, they are generally good conductors. So one of the examples are the lemon which contains citric acid, uh, then salts which contain the sodium chloride. So they all are good conductors. The passage of an electric current through a solution causes what kind of effects in the solution? A lot of chemical changes. So it causes chemical effects. If you pass current through copper sulfate solution, copper gets deposited on the plate connected to the which terminal of the battery? To the negative terminal of the battery. The process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity is called electroplating. So you saw how electricity plays an important role in the process of electroplating because the entire process of transfer of ions from positive electrode to negative electrode take, took place because electric current was flowing through the solution. That is why the electrolyte dissociated and the entire process took place. Question number two. When the free ends of a tester are dipped into a solution, the magnetic needle shows deflection. Can you explain the reason? So this is the solution and this are the free ends of the tester. So now in this tester, instead of the bulb, we have the magnetic needle. Now whenever current flows through the circuit, the magnetic needle shows deflection. So in this case, magnetic needle shows deflection. That means that current flows through the circuit. So this shows that current flows through the circuit. Current flows through the circuit means the circuit is completed, which proves that this solution is a good conductor. So the circuit is complete when the, it is dipped into the solution, which says that the current flows through the circuit. So the current flows through the wire and therefore deflection of needle occurs. So this shows that the solution is good conductor. So deflection occurred because the solution is conducting. Question number three. The bulb does not glow in the setup shown in the figure. List the possible reasons. Explain your answer. So here also if you see this is like a tester where you have a bulb and this bulb is not glowing. So it is not glowing. So that means, so what are the possible options? One option is that the solution is a poor conductor. So if this solution is a poor conductor in that case, it will not conduct electricity. So the circuit will not be completed and therefore electric current will not flow through the bulb and the bulb will not glow. So one option is this solution is a poor conductor of electricity. Other option is the solution is a good conductor of electricity, but it allows to flow only small amount of current. For example, you remember the vinegar solution. Vinegar is also a conductor of electricity, but it is a poor conductor. It doesn't allow enough current to flow through it. And since we have a bulb here, so bulb considerably needs a good amount of current to be blown. So therefore, maybe the current is not strong enough to blow the bulb. So if, if the second option is true, in that case, if you replace the bulb with an LED, the LED might glow. Question number four, a tester is used to check the conduction of electricity through two liquids A and B. It is found that the bulb of the tester glows brightly for liquid A while it glows very dimly for liquid B. You would conclude that liquid A is better conductor, liquid B is better conductor, both are equally conducting. Conducting properties cannot be compared in this manner. Obviously, we can compare it in this manner. Now, when the more the bulb glows, that means the more electric current is being conducted. So, better the uh, conductivity of the liquid, more is the glow of the bulb. So, in this case, as for the question, the bulb glows brightly for A. That means A is a better conductor when compared to B because A allows more current to pass through it. When more current passes through it, so the bulb will glow more. So therefore, the correct option is A is a better conductor than B. 
Question number five. Does pure water conduct electricity? If not, what can we do to make it conductive? Now, when we say pure water, I mean distilled water, which doesn't contain any sort of impurity, no salts, nothing. So, pure water will never conduct electricity. So, if you put the free ends of your tester here, the bulb will never glow, which says that it is a poor conductor. Now, what can we do to make it conducting? Maybe we can add some salts to it or we can add some acid to it and then it can become a good conductor. So, one such example would be instead of using the distilled water, if you use tap water which contains dissolved salts in it or you take the sea water or you take a salt water. So, all these things will be able to conduct electricity because they have salts in them. Question number six. In case of a fire, before the fire men use the water hoses, they shut off the main electrical supply for the area. Explain why they do this. Now, when, whenever we talk about normal water, it is not distilled water. So this water is a good conductor of electricity. Now, since water is a good conductor of electricity, if water and electric appliances come in touch with each other, water tend to pass electricity through it and this will increase the chance of electric shock. Now, if there is a fire, the firemen will be there inside. Now, see, if everything is uh, at high risk of electric shock, then this becomes a matter of risk for the firemen. So, before they start uh, using the water hoses, they will first shut down the main electric supply so that water and electric current do not come in contact with each other. So, fireman might get electric shock if water is poured on the electric wires or appliances. That is why we also stay away from electricity when we have wet hands or we also tend to keep water away from electric appliances. Question number seven. A child staying in a coastal region tastes the drinking water and also the sea water with his tester. He finds that the compass needle deflects more in case of sea water. Can you explain the reason? Now the more is the deflection, more deflection in the compass needle. That means the liquid is more conducting. So it is a simple relation. The way it is in case of a bulb, the more the bulb glows, the better conducting the liquid is. Similarly here also more the needle deflects, better conducting the liquid is. So if the needle is deflecting more in case of seawater, it simply proves that seawater is a better conductor of electricity. Why? Because seawater contains salts in it and any solution with salts or acids or bases, they are better conductors. So therefore, sea water is a better conductor than the drinking water. Question number eight. Is it safe for the electrician to carry out electrical repairs outdoors during heavy downpour? Heavy downpour is the rainfall. Rainwater again is a good conductor of electricity because rainwater contains a lot of dissolved salts in it. Now, since it is a good conductor, so the chances of electric shock are more if somebody with wet hands or with uh, water related stuffs on electric appliances. Question number nine. Paheli had heard that rain water is as good as distilled water. So she collected some rain water in a clean glass tumbler and tested it using a tester. To her surprise, she found that the compass needle showed deflection. What could be the reason? Now rain water again, it contains a lot of dissolved salts and that is why it conducts electricity. But in case of distilled water, it is completely pure. There are no salts, no acid, nothing. So they do not conduct electricity. So here deflection was seen because rain water conducts electricity. Distilled water being free of salts act as a poor conductor of electricity. So with distilled water, the bulb will not glow, the needle will not show any deflection. Question number 10. In the process of purification of copper, a thin plate of pure copper and a thick rod of impure copper are used as electrodes. Copper from impure rod is sought to be transferred to the thin copper plate. Which electrode should be attached to the positive terminal of battery and why? Now remember the process of electroplating. So what happens there? So 
one metal come I mean, the ions are being transferred from the positive electrode to the negative electrode so here what do we want to do we want to purify copper so we want to separate pure and impure copper correct so basically what do we want to do so the copper will get transferred from this one so let us suppose this is the positive electrode and this is the negative electrode so as per the process of electroplating we understood the process well right so the copper ions will be moving from the positive electrode towards the negative electrode and what do we want here we want copper to move from impure rod to the thin copper plate so obviously this should be the impure rod and this should be the thin copper plate so in this case what will happen copper from the impure rod will come out to the solution and copper ions from here will come to the thin plate so gradually over a period of time this thin copper plate will tend to have more and more copper and at the end you will see that all the copper from the impure rod has gone out and you are just left out with the impurities so this is how copper can be purified as well so from that impure rod you could successfully extract the pure copper and got it collected on the negative electrode so this is how the process of electric uh, electro electro plating can also be useful in the purification of processes so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this lesson on chemical effects of electric current would have helped you uh, so see you all in the next lesson thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again